Public Improvement Commission hearing of January 14th, 2021. Of course, public hearing of 2021. Um, before launching into the agenda, I just want to cover two uh, important administrative notes. Uh, first is that Karen Powell has assumed the role of uh, Executive Secretary of the Public Improvement Commission, which is a, uh, a, a, a wonderful thing. And uh, welcome, Karen, to uh, to that role. Uh, second, as folks are probably already aware, uh, the actual composition of the Public Improvement Commission has expanded. Uh, there is uh, the Mayor's Office of Persons with Disabilities is now an official voting member of the PIC, uh, and that Commissioner Makash will be uh, represented, uh, if he is not available, um, by Sarah Leung, if not Sarah Leung, by Patricia Mendez. Uh, both Sarah and Patricia uh, worked for a long time with the PIC with many of the petitioners, and I'm sure have worked with many of you who are on this call. So I want to I'll provide both of updates around both the executive secretary and a reminder about the expansion of uh, the composition of the PIC. And with that, we'll dive into our uh, our first agenda item, which are the hearing minutes. Uh, at the request of the Public Improvement Commission staff, the acceptance of the minutes of the PIC hearing held on December 23rd, 2020. I'll make a motion to accept the hearing minutes of December 23rd, 2020. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Um, moving on to the new business portion. Our first item is 43 Lockdale Road, Washington Street, West Roxbury, specific repairs on a petition by Mr. Owen King. Thank you, Commissioner Osgood. Uh, this is George Morancy. I am the attorney for this project. Uh, joined by uh, David Freed of Chu and Company Architects. Uh, David will actually be making the presentation. Uh, just very briefly uh, for the uh, for the commissioners, this was a project that was approved uh, by the uh, BBDA and the ZBA uh, on a site, uh, 22,500 square foot site at 43 Lockdale Road in Roslindale. It's uh, very close to the JP line. It's very near to the MBTA Forest Hills uh, station. The project, uh, approved project, is a four-story, um, uh, 34, 38 unit residential building totaling 28,775 square feet. As part of the community process, part of the approval process, uh, my clients, um, Owen Kiernan and Gerard Harrigan, agreed to the construction of a new sidewalk from the project site to Washington Street along Longdale, Lockdale Road. The installation of two new crosswalks, one across Lockdale Road at the intersection of Lockdale and Washington Street, and one across Washington Street, and the construction of five new pedestrian ramps and one curb cut extension at Lockdale Road, Washington Street, in Claxton Street. Unless there are any questions on anything that I just said summarizing the project, I'd like to turn it over to David Freed from Chew and Company. George, thanks for that. Any questions by members of the commission on that overview? If not, uh, David, we'll turn it over to you. Hi, uh, thank you very much, Todd. Um, <clears throat> If you would allow me to um, uh, share my presentation. Oh, absolutely. You are here. Uh, so I'll just be brief. This is a um, uh, an image of our project. It's it's a. Uh, I locked a road here uh, behind um, uh, these buildings um, fronting Washington Street and um, abutting there's a private road behind us uh, named Kitson Road. Uh, as you can see, our site in the red here is about three quarters of a mile from Washington Street. The cross, the cross street is Lockdale Road. Behind us is a private way called Kitson Road. That's the present uh, site. It's a um, it's an unbuilt parcel, and uh, Kitson Road um, is here. Lockdale Road is is there, and Washington Street's here. So, um, our our we're here before you because we're going to be um, uh, building a sidewalk and curbing uh, from our project um, along Kitson Road here and down Lockdale uh, to Washington. We're going to be striping. Um, Washington Street here uh, at Claxton and across here at, um, at Lockdale and doing um, a new uh, a pedestrian curb cut. This is 
is an image of uh, Lockdale and Dune Street as seen from Claxton. That is looking towards Washington Street down Lockdale Road. And to the left is where we'll be doing the new sidewalk and curbing. Uh, the vans are the front of our site and Kitson is, is uh, to the left here. Uh, our site again. Just take a second for this to populate. So here's a site plan of our building. And uh, if I can enlarge here. I'm sorry, it's not gonna let me enlarge, but um, what we're planning to do is a new sidewalk down here with curbing, um, three new uh, tree pits for new trees. Um, our sidewalk uh, turns here will be uh, a planer sidewalk and paving along um, Kitson. Uh, that's the first four plans. So um, uh, we have two units at front uh, Lockdale Road and we have a residential lobby um, Park parking is accessed off of Kitson Road. Uh, that's just a typical upper plan, uh, which uh, each floor plan has 12 units, just for reference. Uh, so the uh, this is the existing conditions um, uh, site plan. That's our proposed plot plan. Uh, these were initial markups from the BPDA of what they wanted to see. Uh, so they wanted to see a new sidewalk extended down Washington Street, um, uh, proper pedestrian uh, curb cuts here, striping and striping across to Claxton Street so people can pick up the, um, the, the bus. And so uh, there's a uh, uh, sheet one of our specific repairs plan, which is the uh, portion Kitson and Lockdale Road that outlines um, the new paving uh, to city standards of uh, the tree pits. And this is page two, uh, which uh, is a lower portion from um, uh, our site down to Washington Street, showing again the paving, the curb cuts, um, the, uh, the new striping and, um, and various details. And so that's um, that's the end of our presentation right now. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, David, thanks for that. A pair of questions, uh, which actually other members of the commission may be able to answer better than I could. Um, uh, the, has this been coordinated with the, uh, the bus lane work that's happening on the outbound side of Washington Street, the southbound side of Washington Street, just to make sure that what's being built here is sort of in line with other plans that are happening on Long Island? I believe we have. Um, I believe we have sign off from the MBTA. Okay. If between now and the public hearing, Amy, you will answer this already. But if we could just double check on the hands of me. Yeah. Yeah. Or reach out to me, or uh, you know, Matt Moran, him directly, um, because that's where you're headed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the second piece uh, and it might have already been uh, been explored, but whether. Uh, and again, defer to the other's judgment on the floor. That makes sense to look at a raised crossing for the Lockdale crossing. Uh, if we're going to rebuild that sidewalk, uh, rebuild that crossing, whether it makes sense uh, from a drainage perspective and a sort of general mobility perspective to make that a raised crossing uh, in that uh, in that stretch. I think that the, the there's there are some other um, there are some other businesses on the opposite side of Lockdale. There's a storage company and. Um, uh, and so I, I don't know what the other industrial businesses are on the left side, but I, I don't know if a, a raised sidewalk would would uh, impact impact them in a bad way, or is that something that would be that would change your consideration for that for the requirement of a raised sidewalk? Um, well, I think it would be more. It would appear less raised if they were if you were coming out of Lockdale, right? Because there there is no curbing to speak of uh, when you get further in. Um, yeah. So it's really providing a continuous sidewalk out at Washington. Um, if you're traveling that way, um, that would be the difference. That it would appear um, more of a continuous sidewalk um, than a, a roadway opening. Okay. 
So you're looking, you want, you, you're requesting us to change it to a race car at that location. Uh, I mean, well, investigated, I see the catch basin out there. So, uh, you know, there's also an amount of not at any expense, but um, if that could be uh, a look and appear like a continuous crosswalk, I mean, a continuous sidewalk um, at, on Washington, I think that's beneficial. Okay, great. Thank you for the feedback. Just an uh, other questions or comments by members of the commission? David, DJ, can you hear me? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. David, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so, David, Lockdown Road, the current conditions of the sidewalk is a reflection on the commercial activities that has been there on Lockdown. There was it's a more of a commercial setup rather than a residential component. And that is why the sidewalk or the clinical sidewalks or the lack of sidewalks have been allowed to be there. There has been a desire for parking where sidewalks would be. So now we truly appreciate the fact that you are having a residential component into the backside behind the row houses. And so my point is the sidewalk which you are building on today. It needs to be built in Saturday rather than end star, street line, poles. If you can go into one of your previous pictures, or even if you go into Google Maps, you got those huge end star light poles that are smack in the middle of the sidewalk. And I don't see the level of detail on the new sidewalk which you are building on block day. You just need to integrate the positioning of those ever so slash install own street light poles so that when you build the sidewalk around those poles, you still meet ADA requirements. Okay, oh, so um, yes, yeah, so those poles are so shown on the on the plan. Um, it, it's it's hard to see them. Um, let me see if I can zoom into one of them. Yeah, it's okay, David. You don't need to just make sure oh. that the net difference, because I have been troubled by some of the private developers when they show plans and then yeah. when it actually gets built, I, I have to walk around the light pole or the light pole is smack in the middle of the sidewalks. Yes. And I wonder who had the better sense to build sidewalks of this nature, especially with our new commissioner disabilities in the equation, we need to ensure that is done correctly. Second yes. part, uh, Commissioner Cording, uh, you know, she mentioned about the raised crosswalk, no, slow down, raised sidewalk. You need to balance the commercial traffic component that is still served by Lockdown, okay? Uh, and so balance those, because we want to improve pedestrian safety along Washington Street, but you need to balance the commercial vehicle component that is still coming out. And the last question, this is mostly to the transportation department, the new crosswalk that is being proposed over here, I'm going to assume that irrespective of the fact that our planning agency asked for it, I'm going to make the assumption that, Amy, you are okay with the placement of this crosswalk in terms of whatever the upstream and downstream locations of the next crosswalk and the friction that is there. Yes, okay. we, were, we, we were there, we were in the meeting, they were the ones who drew it um, so that we could pass it along. So yeah, um, this is, uh, it was a little bit tricky with the existing stuff, the catch basins and the bus stop um, and getting uh, the right desire line. Um, so yes, we are, uh, we were complicit in that whole thing and this is the crosswalk that we... So um, you are in terms of, because uh, the transit team is going to... Uh, look towards putting that bus lane, the new painted bus lane over here. So what yep. I do is where's the closest bus stop and all of that good stuff. Okay. Yeah, we'll double check that this doesn't conflict with our our bus stuff of the future. This definitely respects our existing bus stuff. Um, so we'll we'll double check that it's not um, there's no conflict. But um, I, I believe that this will work out. And to your race crossing point, uh, we don't want this to impact anything from a trucking operation other than where the truck hits the bump. Um, you know, after uh, be before pedestrians or after pedestrians is really all that where we would want to change right there. And my last point, baby, uh, the, com the commercial component was heavily on Dockdale. 
we sort of assume what sort of pedestrian traffic is on that street during night time. These guys will be generating the only pedestrian traffic on Lockdale. Um, if you yes. take a look, that's not a place that people are walking at night. Uh, they're providing the residents, um, and we will get them. This pr plan gets them uh, appropriate sidewalks um, from all the way out from Washington Street, where they would be destined to. Um, after this, it's it, it falls off from a pedestrian use and then dead ends. Further to highlight my point, Amy, that the street lighting component that is there on Lockdale between Washington Street and the private street. If we could have someone take a look at the lighting conditions, because there may have been judgments made by the city as to the, the applicability or the adequateness of the lighting when we had a commercial component that disappears around night time versus a residential component that is there 24 seven. Okay, so just the, it's just not the light poles that are impacting your sidewalk just want to make sure that the lighting conditions, the light bulbs are the proper wattage illumination and all of that good stuff. All right, yeah, to, that, to that end, I think they should be looking at Kitson. Um, I don't know that there's lighting out there at all. They're providing a new sidewalk back there that's going to have, I believe, the driveways and stuff that people are going to use to get in and out of their units. Um, so uh, it's a private way. I think you can even explore uh, lighting that's hung from your building. Um, but I think that that's going to be the darkest corner um, here. And, and now we'll have a residential component that it doesn't before. Um, there's only one light that's on a utility pole uh, right out at Washington and Lockdale. Um, so maybe there should be something also at the corner of Lockdale and, and, and Kitson to, to make sure that that whole stretch is illuminated. Could that be could that be something that was mounted to our building overhead lighting? Yeah, so I think that we want to make sure that the thing that's out on Washington and Lockdale is correct from our street lighting department and then find out what would be appropriate or remaining on um, Lockdale. Kitson, it should be okay to hang from your hang off your building. So it's just whether or not uh, it's appropriate to put another light at the corner of Kitson and, and Lockdale. Okay, okay. David, I'm going to assume the private way will continue to function as a private way and the 50 plus residents that are going to come to your property may not be petitioning the city to convert that private way into a public way because if that is coming into the equation, we will have more to say about the lighting conditions that are being proposed on a private way. So okay. One note on that and, and tell me, Todd, please feel free to correct me on that. The private way here is Lockdale. Kitson has been abandoned. Um, Todd, is that correct. right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Lockdale is a private way open to public travel. Kitson was abandoned in 1952, so that is currently private property. Um, so whatever improvements uh, happen back on what was formerly known as Kitson Street um, are outside of the PIC's purview. Yeah, so it's a suggestion that you add lighting um, back there, but it would be great uh, if that's where people come and go from to have it be illuminated. Um, and yeah, I think that from the, the we want to make sure that the, the Lockdale, Washington, where the crosswalks and the um, ramps are is definitely appropriately illuminated. Um, but yeah, making that turn, I would say, is the only place that, that you would you could consider. But at that point, it can be hanging off your building now. So um, I would look at what the easiest way to side, to mount to your building um, all along Kitson and maybe just pull a little bit of that down Lockdale. Okay. All right. Thank you. As a suggestion. Yes. Thank you for the suggestions. I appreciate it. <laughs> Other questions or comments? Todd or Abby? We're all set. Comments from members of the public? I see none. All right, David and George, is two weeks enough time uh, to, to review some of these suggestions? Uh, I believe so, David. I'll defer to you. Yes. Yes. All right, then uh, we'll see you in uh, Dr. from on the 28th is our next meeting, right? Thank Great. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, our next item of new business uh, is Ellery Court, South Boston, abandonment on a joint petition by Mr. Thomas Mitchell, Mr. Kenneth Fogarty, Mr. Greg Donovan, and the Mer uh, Meridian Bank Corp. Inc. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Osgood. This is George Morancy again. I'm the attorney for this project. Uh, my clients are the uh, developers of a proposed project, uh, 444 Ellery Street, which directly abuts Ellery Court. Those clients are um, Malcolm Barber and Niall Dowdle. Uh, I also have derivative authority to represent the property owners here, the Mitchells. 
Um, and when I say property owners, the Mitchells, in fact, owned in fee the entirety of um, what is uh, known as Ellery Court. Uh, this is not a situation where Private Way has shared ownership to the midpoint. Uh, the entire uh, uh, parcel is owned in fee by the Mitchells. Uh, nevertheless, we have secured um, uh, um, the uh, participation of the uh, abutters across uh, Ellery Court uh, to join in this uh, in this joint petition. Um, this is a discontinuance of uh, uh, the city or uh, the public's uh, rights, such as they may be in Ellery Court. Uh, the uh, it is a part of a, a proposed project, a, a six-story, 19-unit residential building. Um, on this side of the site, the Ellery Court site, there would be a, a garage for that building and a, a, a five-foot uh, setback. Uh, so that setback and a portion of the garage would be what it would be replacing, again, what is now known as Ellery Court. I have checked with the property owners, the Mitchells, who have owned uh, the property since 1987, and um, they say that there is no um, record of any regular and habitual use by the public of Ellery Court. In fact, uh, not even any casual and sporadic use of Ellery Court by the public. It, it leads nowhere. Uh, and uh, as I say, the uh, abutters on the left side uh, have all uh, submitted uh, individual petitions as part of this petition for its abandonment. We're also joined today by uh, Len Buffard of uh, uh, CEC uh, and by uh, Tim Johnson, who's the project architect. I'm not sure whether it is Len or Tim. Uh, who will share screen and and and, uh, and uh, make the presentation? But before uh, one of them does that, I'll ask if anybody has question on anything that I just said. Uh, George, just just to confirm, so it's a, the, the abandonment of the public way has approval by all. Our we have documentation that there's support from all adjacent about our abutting properties. That is correct, Commissioner. Yeah. Um, other other questions by the commissioner on George's comments before turning it over. Chief, it will be good to see a sketch of the area before we can actually make a comment as to the. Perfect. George, if your team can, can bring that up. Okay, thank you. I don't know whether it's going to be Len or Tim, but if uh, you could unmute and uh, share your screen. Uh, <clears throat> George, can you hear me? We can, Tim. Okay, uh, thank you. Sure. Uh, Len, do you want me to do the presentation? Okay. I will do the presentation. Uh, let me just find the share screen. It's, uh, present now in this is the lower right hand corner, I think. Oh, present now. Okay. Thank you, sir. Well, one minute. Uh, Commissioner, can you see the screen? We can. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, I will start here. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner uh, Todd, uh, who I know uh, worked with over years, uh, Public Improvement Commission. Uh, my name is Tim Johnson, the project architect. Uh, this is the <clears throat> survey plot plan uh, of the site, 44-46 Ellery Court. Uh, can you see me uh, squirrel my mouse? We can. Okay, uh, this is the eight foot wide area that we're talking about for abandonment. Uh, it is eight, as we said, it's eight feet wide, plus the 42 feet of the remaining parcel gives us a total width of 50 feet once that is abandoned. So this is the parcel here. Uh, the site plan, the proposed site plan, uh, shows the 50-foot um, wide frontage on Ellery. Uh, this is our building footprint set back on the sides at five feet, the rear yard at 10 feet, and the front yard at 12 feet. Uh, we do show a, a reconfigured curb cut. We have an existing curb cut on the site. We will reconfigure it. Uh, we have also uh, provided a seven-foot-wide sidewalk 
Uh, we have been in a review, several reviews with the BPDA. Um, so we're providing, currently the sidewalk, including the curb is approximately five and a half feet. We're adding an, an additional two feet to widen that sidewalk along this 50 foot frontage area. Uh, the property does slope down from 22 feet air to 17, approximately four to five feet. And we do have, which is down here, we have a, uh, in the east, eastern, northeast corner of the site, there is a very nice tree here, which we are going to preserve. Uh, so that is a quick overview of the site area, uh, some 3D views of the building. Chief, you are muted. I'm sorry. Bar. Um, to Parha's uh, earlier question, Tim, do you, it looks like you might have some images of the uh, additional images of sort of the overall context and uh, what, the, what the space looks like today. Do you mind just showing those on your screen? Oh, yes, of course. Um, the BPDA asked us to do a uh, conceptual future development of this area, which is bounded by Ellery, Southampton, and Boston Streets. Uh, this is our proposed project here in the center. Existing buildings are in blue. And the proposed built footprints conceptual footprints would be in the green. So to give some sort of perhaps a future context for this proposed um, six-story 19-unit building. Uh, we've also generated some 3D views, some contextual 3D views showing the existing building. You can see the uh, widening of the sidewalk that we have provided in the street trees. The reconfigured curb cut at the north corner of the site. Uh, also, the BPDA mentioned to us that uh, they were there is some consideration um, that Ellery would become a two-way street in the future. We don't know that, but um, uh, we have provided a seven, seven and a half foot wide, roughly sidewalk with street trees. Uh, this, this is an existing building here to the left of the site. Uh, as we stand on Southampton Street and look down Ellery, you can see again our building here in the rear, uh, existing building here. This is another view from the uh, corner of Dorchester Ave, Southampton, where the Dunkin' Donuts is, uh, looking out past Mount, uh, East Boston Savings Bank uh, to the proposed building. And uh, this is a view from the expressway heading north showing the existing building, the proposed building. And then some color 3D views of the project. So I'll go back to the site plan. And I can certainly go through uh, elevations and plans, Commissioner, if you wish. I, I, that, was, that was a couple context. Um, so one uh, sort of slightly non-PIC related thing, the scissor lift, the, the, how you guys are managing parking on site? It's uh, an elevated structure, is that right? Uh, yes, yes, Commissioner. We are using a uh, two-tier puzzle lift, um, which I'll show you better in a building section here. Sorry for the uh, intense scrolling. Uh, sorry, up to, here we go. So this is a, a longitudinal section. Every street is on the left. Uh, so this, and you can, as I mentioned, the, the, we have about a four to five foot grade change from the Ellery Street to the rear of the property. Uh, we are proposing to use uh, a uh, puzzle lift. It's also called a matrix lift, uh, where uh, cars are driven onto sleds, which can go back uh, up and down or to the left, to the right, um, which allows the cars to be moved around uh, in a vertical space, base, effectively doubling the parking space of that footprint. Tim, I'd like to defer to 
Commissioner Ronan, um, uh, he may have some comments on this related to sort of uh, ISD and, and parking, but uh, um, I, I, are there other questions or comments from members of the commission on this uh, on this proposal? Tom, I have a couple of points on clarification. The petition is for the abandonment of LRE code, correct? Correct. LRE code, how do you show up in our state system? I'm sorry, say that again, Paro. How does LRE code show up in our street book? It is a private way. Got it. So this private way has fee ownership and we assume by only the petitioners. My concern is here are the things which I need clarification. That five foot or LRE code is what five feet or ten feet. Okay. Whatever the width is, okay. Tim, correct me wrong. You said eight feet is the width of uh, the LRE code. So, I, I, yes, yes uh, Commissioner, the, uh, it is only eight feet. Awesome. Thank you, Tim. Yes, when sir. you go all the way down LRE code towards Boston Street, it ends up on a property that has at least per Google Maps, nine Boston Street. Are they a petitioner? On this. This is uh, George Marenzi, uh, the attorney for the project. They're not a petitioner. Uh, there is actually a, a terminus at the end of Ellery Court. It's, it's concrete. It's a, a, a barrier that uh, has been there certainly since my clients uh, owned the park, purchased the property in 1987. So while it does appear here as a, a, you know, a final terminus point of, on, on that Boston Street parcel, uh, it effectively ends before that. Uh, also, there is a title opinion letter that um, not only do none of the properties on the left actually enjoy any uh, private rights uh, in, in, uh, in Ellery Court, but uh, nor does specifically uh, the property at 9 Boston Street. But in the answer to the question, uh, they, uh, they're not uh, part of the petition. The property owners on the left who share frontage are. Thank you, sir. Todd, can you verify that information to make sure that uh, nine Boston Street, it is picking up whether there's a complete of the way or not, whether they have, whether this is being done, uh, and whether it is not all correctly, but that's not the main idea of the ESE. Now, LRE Street itself, in certain parts of our street book, it is private, other areas, it is public, where LRE Court hits LRE Street, that part of Ellery Street, is it public or private? Ellery Street is a public way in this location. So, because there are segments of Ellery Street. Right, so the, the subject of this petition is for Ellery Court only, which is a private way. Ellery Street, which uh, intersects Ellery Court, uh, is a public way at this location. And they are performing some minor um, sidewalk improvements, uh, but those aren't raising to the level of requiring PIC approval at this time. All right, so then my only question is to make sure that 9 Boston has no interaction, legal interaction with this petition. Yes, and we've received the title opinion from the uh, project, and we've reviewed that, and there are no issues with that. And uh, based on that and the petitions that we've received, uh, all, uh, we've looked into nine Boston Street already. And all of this is being done um, in accordance with standard PIC practices. So we've, we've you, checked sir. into that already. Laura, thank you for that. Other questions or comments? Members of the public? I see none. Tim, George, uh, two weeks and enough time to, uh, for the public hearing? Yes, it is. Perfect. All right, we'll see you guys on the 28th. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Commissioner. Our third item is 75 81 Dudley Street, Guild Row, Roxbury, uh, pedestrian easement specific repairs on a set of petitions by Madison Park Development Corporation doing business at 75 Dudley LLC. 
Hi, my name is Meg Regan and I'm Madison Parks, uh, project manager for 7581 Dudley Street. Uh, thank you, Chief Osgood, for um, having us here. Um, I'm going to quickly uh, introduce the project and then I'll hand it over to Erin Joyce of Joyce Consulting, who's the project engineer. So 7581 Dudley Street is a 20 unit uh, affordable home ownership project uh, with 750 square feet of retail space. It's a project that is sponsored by both the city and mass housing for a combined uh, a combined commitment of $4.9 million. Um, it is also uh, the sister project of, 20, of Madison Park's 2451 Washington Street project, which is um, 16 units, uh, nine market rate, and seven uh, affordable. So it's a it's a nice complement um, to the to the area there in Nubian Square. Um, so I think that's just basically a quick introduction. So Erin, um, if I could turn it over to you to go through the project details. Hi, good morning, commissioners. Um, I actually have a um, slideshow that I can share, if that's possible. Yep, that'd be great. Um, just click the present now button and we'll turn to the lower right-hand corner. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, hold on a second. I just want to make sure I share the right thing. Can you guys see? Yep, that's perfect. Okay. All right. So um, just a couple images to give some context on where the project is um, in the neighborhood. So the the orange circle is the site um, that we're going to be talking about, 20, or 75 to 81 Dudley Street. You can see right next door to that, um, to the left, is the sister project that Megan had mentioned at 2451 Washington Street. Um, again, just uh, an aerial view of the project locus on the left side. Uh, we have um, the project site outlined with Guild Row uh, to the right of that and Dudley Street um, traveling along the top of the project um, aerial view. And then on the right side, we have more of an angled shot. You can actually see 2451 is under construction uh, in that image. And we have our site 2451, which is currently vacant uh, on, on the right side there. Just to kind of give a perspective of how um, we have on the right side 20, uh, 75 to 81 Dudley Street, and you can see how it is, you know, it just, I think, more clearly shows how it is meant to be a sister project of 2451, a continuation um, of the housing opportunity realized by that project. For reference, this is looking, um, if you're standing uh, and looking at the project from Guild Row, uh, just, just a perspective of what, of what that looks like. And again, um, on Dudley Street, uh, we're standing up on the corner looking down towards Guild Row. You can kind of see the green uh, building materials on the side of 2451. Again, notice uh, the vacant, the vacant uh, state of the site um, and its current, current view um, on Dudley Street. Just to give a little bit of perspective on how we ended up with the current uh, specific repair plan for this project, when we had first kind of started looking at what um, opportunities might be available to improve some of the streetscape in the neighborhood, we were working with uh, BTD um, to look at some of their planned improvements um, down at Malcolm X Boulevard. The Dudley, I think it's Dudley Square Phase Two project is doing some work. It extends slightly down Guild Road towards us, but it stops about halfway down that first block um, right before you would get to Dudley Street. And then we have maybe some potential future plans for a park across the street from our project, some restriping associated with the two projects. And this was kind of the initial recommendation for how we might extend our curb and create a lane of parking in front of the project, which right now it's kind of 
an extra wide travel lane um, that, you know, is kind of wide for no purpose. So this would give more purpose for Guild Row and um, a more definition and I think fits nicely into an overall context, but I thought it was helpful to kind of see how we ended up with the curb changes and parking changes that we are proposing as part of our project. Um, and then, oh, I wanted to actually show, oh, that's all right. I was gonna show um, what was previously approved for 2451, just to give another sense of how we already have that curb bump out going along, coming into Guild Row, which does set us up nicely for some of this proposed parking that was approved as uh, 2451. Um, they also had some additional work with some, some um, improvements with street trees and um, they were doing, they're gonna be doing that crosswalk at the corner of Guild Row and Washington Street and then they have um, a permeable paver strip that they're doing as part of their work, but that ends at our fir that first tree that they're, um, the first tree that's at that first parking space on the left side of the project, that tree is being replaced as part of 2451's work. So this is um, to, I'll stay on this project, uh, this slide as we kind of talk through the project and answer any questions, um, comment comments from the commission. This is what 2075, uh, to 81 Dudley Street is proposing for sp their specific repairs. It's the creation of four uh, uh, parking spaces, a bumped out curb radius at the corner of Gilroe and Dudley Street with an improved uh, accessible ramp on our side of the project. On the other side of Dudley Street, that's actually a new crosswalk. Um, so we would, our new accessible ramp. So we would be proposing um, new crosswalk striping to tie into that. And I think that summarizes generally what we're looking to do. We're, obviously, uh, we're all also widening the sidewalks most notably to meet the minimum requirements. There'll be eight feet sidewalks. There will be associated pedestrian easements to accompany the widened sidewalks um, at the request of the city. I think that makes great sense. Um, so I think now would be a great time to get feedback um, on the plans from the commission as, as, as you have. I have a question about that Pettiesman on Dudley Street. The the trees on Dudley Street are of great importance um, to this community. Um, they are enormous. Um, you're showing trimming back the tree pits to make your minimums work, but it also seems like you have dimension between the back of the sidewalk and your Pettiesman and your building face. Uh, could that be extended so that you don't have to modify the tree pits? You're showing shaving them back, but if you look at these trees, they are justified trunk to edge of pit. Um, so there's no shaving it back, right? That will kill the tree. Um, we, we definitely have an interest in keeping these trees. Um, so whatever could be done to get the Pettiesman all the way to the building face and provide the required dimensions uh, without having to do substantial construction around those mature trees would be desirable. Similarly, you will we're willing to lose a, a parking space here to, to keep the big ones on Guild Row. Okay, so I think to answer your question with regards to the width of the sidewalk, there is a, there is a sliver of sidewalk before we would get to the building face, so I think we could widen the pedestrian easement a little bit to accommodate keeping the existing street tree pits. Is that, that sounds like what the request is? Like the, I guess the pit, the, the openings today for the trees are pretty similar in size to what would be the standard if they were new. So I think we could keep the existing pits and and have the accommodated sidewalk we might have to tweak the, the pedestrian easement but we have space to do that yeah i mean i think the goal is just to not have to do work in and around those tree pits um the the trees are right up against them and i just don't think that we're going to get a lot of positive results um doing any work right there so uh, i think the goal would be where you're pouring new sidewalks to make sure that uh we can provide the pedestrian easement to pour new sidewalks on the building side to make the dimension um and not have to try to um eke any of that out of the tree pits um because tree loss here will will make a a, a big difference in the um, um, perception of this project. Yeah, I, un I understand that too. And then with regards to pouring new sidewalks in the vicinity of some of the tree pits, the sidewalk is raised. I do think it's probably a result of the roots um, coming to the surface. So 
from an accessibility perspective, we certainly need to create a sidewalk that doesn't have that sort of wavy over the trunk. Um, so I don't know to the extent at which we improve the sidewalk to create an accessible um, pathway that impacts those trees. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't know. So I think that we would want to know the out the accessibility outcomes if we d take that the no harm to the tree route, um, and then we can figure out what's missing from an accessibility standpoint. Because I, I think that we want to figure out what has the least impact on the trees, but then add back in to make sure that we're getting all of our accessibility uh, standards. And like, I yeah, no, we, we're only going to solve the problem with the trunks now. But um, you, if we cut if we cut the roots, it's it's same result, right? You're going to be planting new trees. Yeah, and that would be that would obviously be the concern in the areas where the the trunks are uh, the the roots are coming to the surface, and we want to say even just lower the sidewalks like a couple inches. The impact of taking out that sidewalk panel and you know getting to it, this point where we could put in the required sub base and actual concrete panel like would that be too much impact on roots that might be sizable and impact the tree. So I think we can we can study that a bit more and try to um, to meet the goal to meet the goals that you're um, laying out. I just that aspect of it I think is going to be tricky in this particular situation. Yeah, and I think that we just also want to be upfront and honest about what the real impact to these trees are, um, not just show them on a plan as being preserved and then ultimately have them be, uh, you know, die through construction. So I think that we want to see what we can do to minimize our impact to the trees. Um, I think that Jill Zick and the BPDA and Patricia and Sarah here between all of them can get us to uh, what the right blend of, of conservation and uh, accessibility are. Um, I think it just looks like that we have the dimension here. Uh, you know, it's, it's inches um, to make it work with, with minimal tree impact. So that's, we just want to minimize it as much as possible. Okay, that's understood. Amy, thanks for raising that, and Aaron, thanks for your work on that. Um, uh, other uh, other questions or comments? Aaron, can yes, you I was oh. sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I just had a clarifying question on whether or not there was an update um, regarding the street cabinet and whether or not it would be feasible to move that closer to the curb just to let um, a little bit more um, clear width of, be available to pedestrians. Yeah, so let me, um, I think I, oh, do I have a picture of that? You can see the street cabinet um, in this, I think you can, sorry. You can see it in one of these pictures, but I thought I had a different one, that's all right. Um, so you can see um, the street cabinet that you're talking about is over on the corner. And right now it is in the furniture zone. It's right you know, at the back of curb. Um, What's happening here is we're bumping out that radius, so then it's going to appear to be in the center, though there will be, um, there'll be almost, I think I had said, in, I think it's like six, at least six feet to pass around the cabinet. Um, I There isn't gonna be any issue with getting around the cabinet, but I think having the cabinet be in the space it is now is more more of a uh, visually it might look a little off um, but I do think the cost I, the owner was looking into the cost of moving that cabinet initially the thought was that was going to be pretty expensive but I don't think that the analysis has come back yet so we're still still working on that um, there from an accessibility perspective it's not going to be an issue but it visually it might look a little off um, so I guess that's just something that we would want to understand um, the importance of weighing against the cost. So I think you should go straight to the street lighting department because the cost of moving the cabinet is completely dependent on how much wire we have to, to move it. Um, so we, if we don't have to add wire and we can slide it, it, so it depends on if we're backing up down our own wires or we need to extend them. Um, but I think that there's potential that this is an easy move. Uh, and I agree that there's potential that it's wildly expensive. It's easy, we wanna get it out of the way. Um, uh, I, I think that that's a part of it. Um, and if it's difficult, then I think that we should come back to the transportation project that is ultimately supposed to also tr end up here um, so that we can consider it again at that point. 
Okay, thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, yeah, Aaron, can you go back to a couple of slides? There was a slide which caught your card. Uh, okay, hold on. Um, because I think one of your opening ones, when you started your slide presentation, there was a, there was a can, articulation of that large public park looking space. Oh yeah, that was just, um, I was hoping to show an overview of some of the striping in the neighborhood, just some of the initial context of how we ended up with the curb bump out. Can you? Is that can, it? No, not this one. Oh, not this one? Not this one, sorry. So. Sorry, you're not. The one that shows the park on the other side of Guild Row. In oh, you Miami. know what? Sorry, I might I might be scrolling on a. <laughs> Sorry. Is it moving now? It is. Yep. Okay. No. I had a different that well, uh, yeah. Actually, that that's fine. Okay. Sorry. Harder to see the slide. This one? Uh, yes, Aaron. Uh, CDT, to whom does that green space belong to? This rendering? No, no, no. I'm going to assume, like, is oh. you try to understand what this rendering has to do with this presentation and try to understand whether this is something you are not proposing or whether this no. is a big space. What is no. it in here? So, so I think um, Mara, I, I will just stop right here and tell you that this is wildly strange and murky based on uh, the crescent that used to represent the like where the road used to be and ownerships of former buildings and stuff. There's a lot to, to talk about here. Um, I'm happy to answer whatever question, or Todd can now, um, answer any questions about it, but I, I think that we would only serve to muddy this particular conversation. Um, but the park is, uh, is something that is being considered through the larger transportation plan um, that's coming through here. Um, and yeah, we can, we can talk about it. I'm, I'm, I'm confused when you say a transportation plan on a real estate plan of this nature. Uh, so it's a Pat Hoey plan. It involves BPDA uh, to fix some of the property lines that exist in this location. Is there another way for me to see this area in the context of your site plan? Uh, honestly, I, I didn't mean to, to, to open a can of worms with that picture, I was really just trying to show the facade, the facade continuance uh, to show the sister project relation between two properties. Uh, I think that image that's on the screen now that shows a park or whatever in front of the project was purely just an architect's interpretation of what would look nice in a rendering. Um, so, with I, I do apologize for no, that. No, no. It's a, okay. So it's, I'm going to delete that thing from the record. So can you go back to a site plan that shows the site plan that we should be looking at? Yes, I'll put that back up. Okay, like even, even in that site plan, see, that's the one that really confused me even further. The yeah, one go back is, one, to the one that's on the park. Okay. So do your project is within this pork chop. Yes, no? Do we want to be on this one or the one before it? This is fine. This is the context of what we're talking about here, Par and Pat and I will come in and give you the the whole story on the rest of okay. um, everything off this page. But the project 75-81, your your building project is within this triangular piece of real estate. It's the gray building. It's the gray building. And today, what is there right now? Nothing? Zip? Open Zip. Space? Yes. It's just... It's just, it's just like grass and some scraggly trees and some trees. Yes. So, Aaron, for the public hearing, I think we need to, just to avoid awkwardness, show pictures of what is there today and what is being proposed in the context of the site plan. Anything else will make the conversation a bit awkward. Okay, so. Sure, we can, uh, yep. Okay, so today, uh, Amy, today we have a piece of uh, grass strip over there that I'm going to assume is, uh, doesn't belong to the city, obviously, and the developers want to put a building over here and to facilitate the curb uh, ground floor usage, you want to carve off some road space and create parking in 10 words or less. 
Yes. So actually, uh, the the genesis of the parking is them conforming to what the future transportation plans here, which actually had removal of the lanes. So that's why the the curb came bumped out. Um, so then. We, because we want to preserve the trees, it would either be add parking or we would have a sidewalk on both sides of the trees. Um, so that was the genesis of the parking was that uh, we actually wanted to get this down to one lane making the turn. Um, and, and that's why it needed to come out at the corner. Um, the, the parking could be there, could not be there. Uh, it seemed like an amenity for the building. Um, and it was, we were going to have a split sidewalk in our uh, desire to, to leave the trees in place here. Thanks, Amy. Two minor notes, uh, Aaron, while you have this one up. Uh, if you can just connect with Todd or, or Para um, on the angles of the bump out or bump in, they're a little bit sharper than we would normally use for, we would normally have um, really for sort of street sweeping and uh, snow plowing purposes. And then I think you and Todd have already connected about this, but if, uh, for the public hearing, just showing the design of the, of the pedestrian ramp at uh, Dudley and Guild Row, uh, sort of angling across uh, Dudley Street. Yes. Um, yeah. Great. Thank you. Also, your bump in has no drainage, um, which, so I, I, at least understanding that the water is getting in and out of there um, appropriately. Yeah, that's all very like Dudley Street is very um, is very pretty steep oh, down right, now. Yeah. So right now. The water comes around the corner and goes down towards a catch basin at the corner of Washington and Guild Row. So the way that we're bumping out really doesn't impact that drainage because the water still has plenty of ability to go around the curb. Um, it's basically gonna be following the same path, just a slightly longer one because the curb line is gonna be a little bit longer. Yeah, I just, we just wanna, we don't wanna sheet water by the, the ramps. Um, so if, if just verify that we shouldn't be catching some of it before we get to our crosswalks. Okay, understood. Other questions or comments on this? Todd or Avi? Uh, we're all set with this one. Okay, members of the public? I see none. Okay. Um, Aaron, Megan, uh, two weeks enough time to, uh, to work through some of these things? It is, yep. Perfect. All right, we'll see you on the 28th. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Commission. Thank you. Our next item is Arlington Avenue at Dorrance Street in Charlestown, a grant of location on a petition by NSTAR Electric Company doing business as Ever Source Energy. Yes, uh, good morning. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, Dominic Rinaldi with the BSC Group here on behalf of Eversource, uh, requesting a grant of location to install some electric cabling and a reverse current switch uh, on a pad mounted enclosure in the sidewalk of Arlington Avenue in Charlestown. I do have, if you'd like me to share from my uh, Dominic, have a great drawing, time. certainly. Uh, Everybody see that? Because for some reason I don't. Oh, we can see it. Oh, that's kind of weird. I don't. Uh, <laughs> good. Uh, so, anyway, as um, Project's located in the northeast corn, northwest corner rather of the intersection of uh, Dorrance Street and Arlington Avenue in front of uh, an MBTA maintenance facility uh, here. The purpose of the project is to take a, an existing reverse current switch out of that MBTA facility um, and put it out into the public way so that Eversource would have access to it 24 seven right now. Um, it's in a locked closet in a building that they don't have keys to that is not manned 24 seven. Um, so for the most part, when they need to access it, which is going to be nights and weekends when they're doing work, um, they have to make a whole variety of arrangements with the T. 
Um, basically, uh, if you're not familiar with my understanding of a reverse current switch is it's pretty much what it sounds like in that it is a, a switch that reverses the flow of current. So uh, the way it was explained to me as a site person is similar to a water supply system if it's looped and you have to isolate a section here, the water sort of automatically will, will cycle around and back feed. You have to force electricity to do that. Um, if I can zoom in a bit. So the, it basically involves installing this small pad mounted RCS switch in, a, in an enclosure um, in the sidewalk and about 15 or 16 feet of cabling back to an existing manhole to make the connection to the distribution system. Um, as we've shown on the plans, the by placing the, the enclosure at the back of the sidewalk, we still keep a little under six feet of clear space for pedestrian travel. Um, and if um, and that's actually more than what is there with the existing, there's a, another existing electric cabinet um, and meter box um, on the street that will be right next to. At the request of the uh, Disabilities office will also be replacing the curb cut ramps at the driveway into the NBTA facility to, to better, better facilitate pedestrian traffic. That's pretty much the project. Uh, if anyone has any questions, be happy to. I definitely defer to par on this, but to the extent that this is within any of the route, any of the area of reconstruction associated with the Rutherford Ave project, just want to make sure that. Uh, the Rutherford Avenue Sullivan Square project. Just want to make sure that it, uh, we pick up anything which should be associated with uh, uh, with work at this corner. The part I'm not sure whether it, it, it extends up this far, uh, up either Arlington or down Dorrance. Like Para might have been frozen. Um, other questions or comments on this? Todd or Robbie? All set. Is there members of the public? None. Um, if sometime between now and the public hearing, uh, Don might can just make sure to connect uh, either directly with PAR or through Todd just about sure. any implications it has for, uh, for the Rough Draft project. That'd be great. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, two weeks enough time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, he's, oh. I think he's back. Hey, hey PAR, the one, the one piece that I just wanted to, to flag and wanted Dominic to connect with you on it, but it may not be necessary, is whether there's anything associated with the Rough Draft project that we want to be mindful of with this uh, particular. Um, with this particular action. Chief, sorry, I had a network issue here. No problem. Um, the, the issue I just wanted to uh, raise, and it may, it may be a, a non-issue, is whether there's any connection or coordination with the Rutherford Ave project. We just want to be mindful of with this action. Yes, I'll check on that. Thank you, sir. That was it. All right, Donald, we'll see you in two weeks. All right, great. Thank you very much. Um, our next action is Commonwealth Avenue at St. Thomas More Road in Brighton, specific repairs on a joint petition by the City of Boston Public Works Department and the Friends of Boyden Square. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Um, I'm with Niche Engineering. We are the design engineer on this project. Um, and I'm going to share my screen right now. You assume you can see my screen? Perfect. So the, uh, the project is really uh, the Boyden Square uh, project near the uh, BC uh, MBTA station. And uh, it, it's a collaborative effort between the uh, Friends of Boyden Square and the uh, city of Boston through the public works. And uh, with me also <clears throat> uh, is Ray Dunnett, who is the landscape architect, Regina Belavia and 
Bill Mills are from the Friends of the Poison Square. Uh, so as you can see, the uh, uh, first the, from the aerial, uh, we, we have the delineation between the city of Newton and the city of Boston. And technically, Boyden is right adjacent to it and within the city of Boston uh, boundaries. So uh, the um, <clears throat> anything within the green uh, colored uh, layout is the responsibility of the uh, friends of the Boyden Square. And then outside it, uh, uh, on the street side, is uh, uh, public works uh, that movements. Uh, uh, the project consists really of um, improvements to aesthetic improvements and also the functionality of the square itself. And let me. Uh... This is a picture uh, if you are standing in front of the, uh, this, the platform at the station and looking to the west. Uh, you can see the conditions of the of the square right now, and uh, and then another image looking from the opposite direction. And in terms of you can see the the uh, amenities that are there or the elements which consist of the uh, uh, light poles, utility poles, and uh, the, to the like. So the project. Uh, you know, as you can see, there isn't much really construction from within the uh, the green space uh, of the Boyden Square. Uh, there is uh, the, the light pole, which is will be up, upgraded because we are elevating the, really the entire bed of the square itself. And um, and the, from a traffic uh, signal perspective, there is only one one signal, three section uh, facing the. Uh, uh, facing the station, when the train comes out, it can proceed. We're not uh, modifying any of the signal equipment. This is a cross section of the uh, of the proposed condition, and as you can see, currently uh, uh, pedestrian can cross through the uh, uh, the green space uh, from one side to the other. And then with this cross section, we are providing a, a, a two layer of uh, granite uh, curbing reveals. And, uh, and then we are uh, uh, installing the, uh, uh, we are installing also the river stones. It makes it kind of more uh, you know, prevent people from crossing through. And, and then the, um, as, as you can see the, uh, from within, uh, the green space, the uh, how the cur the uh, the surface will be curved. Uh, to then, from storm water's perspective, it does not puddle with water, and there will be a picket a steel picket fence all the way around that area, so it will be uh, it'll prevent people from crossing through it. <clears throat> and that's basically overall an overview of the project. Great. Well, there's no sort of change to the landscaping that's sort of embraced by that space. It's much more of a the change to the curbing and the addition of the, the fence and sort of the two tiered curb system. That's correct. All right. And um, in terms of maintenance of that space today, uh, what is done by parks, what is done by the friends or, the Bo or Boston College, or, or how is that sort of coordinated uh, right now? I would like to ask Regina if she is uh, available to address that question. Sure. Good morning. This is Gina Bellavia from Boston College. So currently, uh, the Friends have no involvement in the maintenance. Uh, it's uh, city-owned and is, frankly, neglected by the city. <laughs> There's not a lot of maintenance that happens there. Um, but BC does go in there several times a year and mows down, you know, mows down the, the tall grass, and we pick trash out of there regularly. Um, but part of this agreement, we have it in draft form, is an LMI uh, that we intend to get to you probably by Monday. Uh, it has gone back and forth a little bit, and our general counsel had some comments. So we've made some adjustments that we need to send forward. Perfect. Uh, thanks so much, and I'm sure you're going to do this. But you can give us that to Chong. That would be great. 
Okay. One other, other thing I don't want to mislead is the landscape we are intending to change a bit. So, um, again, the city DPW is going to be doing the curbing and the river stone, and then the landscape would include the fence and a change in the planting, again, to celebrate the entrance into the city. Um, it's mounted because we want to um, hopefully protect the plantings from road salt and things like that. So there is a change to the landscape. I didn't want that to be misleading. Virginia, I appreciate that. Other questions? No, go ahead. Go ahead, so in, in the way of some background information, this segment of Commonwealth Avenue was part of Commonwealth Avenue Phase 5 improvements, which was done for almost maybe two decades ago. And we recognize the fact that this little area is at that cusp boundary between Boston and our sister city. And we always try to understand who can uh, keep this in a state of uh, pleasant repair. Neglection by the city may may not be the way I would articulate it. There has been some ongoing dialogue between BC and the city uh, as to what needs to be done at this location in terms of the entrance to our city. And we truly appreciate the Friends Group who has taken an active role in doing the right thing. And we further appreciate BC's role in stepping up to the plate and recognizing what needs to be done. Simply because of the way of the MBTA tracks turned around over here has added to the drama and confusion. So that's background. All right, I appreciate that and appreciate everybody's um, stewardship and, and coordination on, on this uh, gateway parcel. Other, other questions or comments about this proposal? Any members of the public? I see none. Okay. All right. Um, is two weeks enough time? You guys want to come back on the 28th? The public hearing? Terrific. All right. Pablo and Regina, we'll see you guys then. Yeah. Thank you. Terrific. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. Our final item of uh, new business is Cobbin Square, Washington Street. Norfolk Street, Talbot Avenue, Epping Street, Whitfield Street, Dorchester Specific Repairs, and a joint petition by the City of Boston Public Works Department and the Boston Water and Sewer. Uh, all right, I'll start off. All right, good morning, members of the commission. Um, my name is Jeffrey Alexis with the City of Boston Public Works Department. Um, I'm joined here with Faisal um, Husseini from Niche Engineering, as well as Mike Davis from the Boston Water and Sewer Commission. Um, to give you guys a brief um, brief overview of this, this project um, in, in collaboration with the Water and Sewer Commission. Um, we're here as co petitioners for the Common Square Green Infrastructure Improvements Project in Dorchester. Um, we've been working with Boston Water and Sewer to propose um, um, some improvements to supplement some of the existing safety um, improvements that were made recently through um, Boston Transportation Department's Vision Zero um, initiative for the Common Square Academy um, that included daylighting and flex post. Um, we wanted to supplement those improvements with constructed improvements that will include curb extensions, um, improved pedestrian ramps and crossings, um, and five bioretention air, um, areas that will be maintained by the Common, Common Academy. Um, Common Academy has been very involved um, in kind of pushing this forward. They are planning on um, maintaining um, the bioretention areas where they will be um, included in the curriculum with their students. Um, um, with that, I mean, I'll, I'll turn over turn it over to, to Pfizer to kind of go over more of the details. Again, good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Faisal Husseini. I'm with Niche Engineering, and we are the designer on this project. And uh, as uh, Jeff has mentioned, that the purpose of this project is the uh, uh, kind of the improvements for uh, pedestrian access, uh, regain some of the roadway pavement, uh, and introduce some green space. Uh, this is kind of the uh, overview uh, aerial of the project and then you can see uh, hopefully you can see some of the, these areas and the different area along uh, Washington Street and then also uh, along uh, uh, Whitfield uh, Whitfield Street as well uh, and um, so the areas which is we consider like one two three four five these are the ones only has the green space that we're able to accommodate and then the two uh, the two areas on uh, Whitfield Street 
it has a, only bulb outs and uh, reconstruction of the sidewalk for, for pedestrian access improvements. We were not able to gain any space for green space. Uh, this is a kind of design uh, plan for, for the areas. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the, the extent of the, of, the, uh, of the improvements. And uh, basically, a following up, uh, the next follow up is, is a cross section in, in, uh, for, uh, for each area. And I'm just going to go in detail in, uh, through one of them. And then all of them are almost kind of the same thing. So I'm not going to uh, dwell on each one of them separate. And this is where the area number one, which is really on the uh, uh, on the southeast uh, corner of the intersection between Washington and Talbot Avenue. And it the, kind of the image ro rotated in here. You can see the north arrow uh, downward now. Uh, and so the existing curbing is, is runs alongside the, the dotted lines in here. And then we are expanding it toward the, the street side where we are kind of establishing this big area. Uh, which consists of two green space areas on both sides, and in the middle there are two pedestrian ramps uh, that are being used by uh, uh, to, to access the, through the intersection. And um, there will be educational signage in there that describe the, the history and some information about the uh, the improvements. And um, and then down below, as you, you can see in here, at the cross section. So you have in the middle, you have those pedestrian ramps, and then on, on, on both sides that we uh, we have what we call bioretention or green, uh, or uh, rain gardens, basically, with some planting in it. And then within that uh, structured, um, uh, you know, areas uh, in terms of soil, and then it has a couple drainage. Uh, a couple of drainage pipes in, in there. These are perforated pipes that runs below uh, underground. And then we have two infiltration risers, uh, one in each area. And, and the function for those risers in the event that there is a heavy rainstorm that uh, that goes through the area and then it, it, it takes that additional uh, flow and then brings it down through the perforated pipe. And if there is an access to that, if that Preferred pipe fills out, and then it can access the uh, uh, the city drainage system. But then it does not, you know, uh, overflow or puddle in this area. The um, <clears throat> so the uh, the fun, the fun, I mean, the purpose of that is to minimize the amount of uh, sheet flow from the street level down to the city system. And this program has been with Boston Water and Sewer for some time now. Uh, that we're trying to accomplish uh, the same uh, goals on, on, on these areas. So, uh, again, the, the second one is for the other areas. And um, as I said, um, it's, it's almost the same thing, different configuration, uh, but the same cross section, the same, uh, you know, uh, details. So that's, that's all the, uh, again, uh, those, uh, uh, green space areas details. Uh, thank you for your presentation. This can you uh, hopping one slide forward, or this slide is fine. Um, I think I'm just. Can you just show on the on the rendering of the bump out on the top where the where the planting areas are and how the and where the cobble then where the cobble connections actually connect. Or what the sort of the role the cobble of stone areas are. Uh, uh, sorry, not not on this one, but on one of the area. exactly. And this one. The um, the granite co the granite cobble is if you if you look at this area again uh, from from here the layout of the, these are the, the the two pedestrian ramps, and there are some cobble in between them. Uh, to delineate like the separation between the ramps, right, and um, and, and that's basically the the cobble in, on the, in that area. There are some some cobble, you know, pavement that's for the. Yeah, the, everything between the ramps and essentially the cobble area to the right is the planting bed. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, and is the the cobble that is sort of between the two ramps is that merely aesthetic or is that functional as well? 
it, 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 it serves both. You know, it, it, it's a, it's really a function to separate the two ramps and then uh, a function to uh, an, an aesthetic perspective. I, I think it may be worth it. Maybe this is, uh, Jeff, this conversation's already happened, but I think it's worth it for us to see whether it's cobble necessary. It is a beautiful sort of aesthetic feature, but whether cobble is necessary there, just knowing that that's not sort of standard, I think it's not sort of standard detail that we replace in other parts of uh, city sidewalks. So could that, just that wedge piece be, should that wedge piece be cement or does it work as cobblestone? Anyway, happy to. Um, that may continue that conversation between now and the public hearing. Chain two. Yep. Please, yeah. Yep. I'm not muted. So, just a bit of contextual information, Chief. Uh, the purpose of this effort, I believe, is it is in the category of stormwater management, but not managing the quantity of runoff, even though we are assisting in the flow rate, but it, it has also to do with managing the quality of the stormwater runoff. Now, that being said, these initiatives were, this initiative come up, was initiated uh, a few years back when there were lots of very energetic people. Now, I'm not saying that there are not, there are no more energetic people, but you know, some of those team members are uh, not with the city anymore, but I think they were trying to do the right thing by trying to manage the quality of the stormwater runoff. So the, the ongoing challenge is, as much as when we build this green infrastructure, who is going to be maintaining this infrastructure? That, that's an ongoing challenge which the, the your department, Public Works Department, has been discussing with the Water and Sewer Commission and the Environment Department. So I completely agree, not agree, understand the point you are trying to make is when we introduce anything that is not our standard bag of tricks, i.e. the cobblestones, uh, what is the marginal utility in that cobblestone becoming a maintenance headache uh, versus the incremental value of the uh, permeability of that space with the storm water going into it. So uh, I fully support what the chief is saying, guys, we need to understand the incremental use of the maintenance responsibility. If ever that ramp has to be redesigned or for that matter, if there should be any slick ice over there, and the experience of somebody in a wheelchair experiencing cobblestone. So this is something that you need to also make sure that our disabilities commission is cool with it. So maintenance, uh, functionality, long-term viability, incremental uh, asset towards the permeability of that space. Zach, if you want to add minus something, go for it. Hi, Power. Uh, hi, everyone. Zach Wasmuth. I don't think I introduced myself, uh, Chief Design Engineer with Public Works. Um, been working very closely with Jeff and the design team on this. Um, yeah, if we want to revisit that material, I think that's fine. I just want to also note that it is intended to be a raised separation in between there. So as far as uh, it, I think the cobblestones is intended to be like a deterrent uh, for people to walk on as well. We've used similar, um, you know, and was mentioned in the previous project with the river stones. We've used those in the, um, sorry, uh, Upham's Corner. Um, and something like that. So it's something that uh, that we put in there, again, as an aesthetic, as a deterrent for pedestrians and everything, but it could just as well be concrete. And also to speak to the maintenance um, aspect, I think Jeff alluded to, we do have a three uh, party maintenance agreement that is um, currently in the process of collecting those signatures right now. Uh, Codman Academy, as Jeff alluded to, will be maintaining the landscaping and everything. Water and sewer is in on that, and uh, Public Works is in on that to, for our respective assets. So that's all um, just you know going through the getting collecting the signatures at this point, but it's all been um, vetted and agreed to. So absolutely, we can take a look at that. And I think it's just a quick conversation between now and the public hearing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That'd be problem. So. I just wanted to add in um, what, wherever we're proposing return curbs, if we could add some vertical obstruction just to deter pedestrians, um, kind of um, on tone with the conversations that we've been having about the cobblestone, um, just a way for um, it not to become a tripping hazard. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Jeff, if I was Zach, other things we want to cover with this? Uh, I think I'm all set from, from yeah. 
That's about it. If anybody else has any more comments or questions. Yeah. Uh, Todd Robbie? Good. All set. All right. Any members of the public? None. All right. Um, we will see you back here in, uh, in two weeks on the 28th if that works for you. Thank you. Fantastic. Until Thank then. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, with that, I, again, I want to sort of formally, uh, again, sort of re welcome uh, Karen and Sarah in their, in their new roles, and I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Also, welcome. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so moved. Take care, all.